Oh, shnikes. Oh, shnikes. Holy smokes. What is going on? We got the band. That's right. We are on a, we are on a mission from God. We're on a mission from God. That's right. We got the guitar. band back together. <laughs> Holy shit. What is going on? Everybody watching right now. It's your boy Preston. That's right. Fat Samurai guy. Welcome back to the channel. And speaking of, welcome back to the channel. We have up in the hazy, we have Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. Brother, how are you, my friend? Doing very well, my friend. Nice to be back. Yeah, man. It's good to see you. And uh, and below me, that's right. That's right. The werewolf enthusiast. The metal maniac. That's right. From the Metal Tavern Radio Podcast, DJ Anubis. So... Welcome back, brother. I got to I got to blow it up. Hold on a sec. I got to I got to What is this awesomeness that's all in the background here? Look at that. Look look at all that. See, that's what that's what I'm talking about. Horror <laughs> and metal combined. That's right. And, and, and speaking of combining powers, you know him, you love him. That's right. Writer, filmmaker, martial artist, Kyle Wong. Not in a thong. You have to pay a little extra for that. Yes, to subscribe fans. to my OnlyFans later. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle he, Wong, he, welcome back, brother. Thank you for having me back again. <laughs> Yes, 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 man. Feet pictures is... are extra. <laughs> <laughs> You've kind of been on a roll recently, Kyle. We uh, uh, reviewed The Corrupter. Is it underrated? Mm -hmm. We had Bobby Samuels on here talking about some awesome behind-the-scenes uh, experiences, which kind of segue to this. This wasn't planned. My, my brother from another mother, Eric, brought this up way back. He's like, you know, we should talk about replacement killers, you know? And uh, not that many people really talk about that movie. And I was like, yeah. And then six years passed because I'm old. You see all the gray hair here? I'm old, so I, I'm, I'm very forgetful. Uh, but us revisiting co The Corrupter, because, uh, you know, after so many years, I changed my opinion on it. I, I was actually very surprised. I was like, my, what, am, I, am I insane? Am I the same guy? Because I was always a replacement killers dude. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, replacement killers, replacement killers. And then the very next year, I went to go see the Corruptor, and I went into to, went into the Corruptor and re expecting replacement killers, <laughs> but that's not what that movie was all about. Yeah. Now, so yeah. many years later, I, I accepted the Corruptor on its own terms, and I was like, you know what? That was a pretty, pretty kick ass, a uh, crime action movie. Like I really, I was really surprised. And you know, now it's like, you know what? Now it's time. It is time. I think it's time to uh, segue to uh, the replacement killers. And originally, the idea was going to be the replacement killers was going to be another is it underrated episode. And then I looked on Rotten Tomatoes just for shits and giggles, just to check the, the critic score and the audience score. And I was like, oh, my God, what is what is going on? So <laughs> we're going to talk about the good and the bad and the ugly. And let us know in chat right now what you guys think about the replacement killers. Is it suck? Is it garbage? Is it, is it a travesty? Uh, is or you guys enjoyed it for what it was? Uh, let us know. Oh, shit, the sex to sumo in the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's here all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, let me say hello to everybody in chat really quick, and then we can get the party started. That's right, filmmaker Rage Peaks at motherfucking night, son. That's right, Matt Merritt. Good to see you, my friend. That's right. We starting the ruckus. That's right. Pieces of work. Oh my goodness. Pieces of work. What's going on, Corey? How you doing, man? A a filmmaker himself, an actor. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. Good to see you. But very man. busy lately. I've heard. Right. Well, you know what happens when you when you become a star. <laughs> you know, you just you look down on the little people like you us. Forget about you know? the little guys. Right. No, I, like, I, I thought it was all cocaine, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's what it is. You know. You know. You, you know, he felt sorry for Samurai Guy. He did my, he, you know, he did my podcast. He's like, ah, Eric said he was a nice guy, you know. <laughs> no, we yeah, I him. lied, uh, and then he got upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, man, we love you, brother. Well, hopefully we get you back on there here uh, talking. <laughs> uh, talking movies uh, in the future, my friend. Yes. All right. Now let's go around. Let's go around here, and I'll start. I'll go last. We'll start with Eric. Eric, where what did you think of uh Replacement Killers 1998? Don't forget, guys, everybody watching, there's gonna be spoiler discussion. Uh 1998. Uh, what did you think of it then? And what do you think of it now, revisiting it after all these years? 
it basically mm. maintained the same uh, status, I guess you could say. I did see this in the theaters when it came out. I did yeah. not know who Chow Yun Fat was when I saw this movie. Wow. So, look at that. Yeah. So I, I saw a trailer and I think the trailer kind of won me over a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go watch it. And me and my cousin went to see it. And uh, it turned out to be quite an entertaining action flick. And, you know, looking back on it, it's one of those those flicks where, you know, I'm the one thing that that really pleased me revisiting it was a runtime of like 90 minutes because <laughs> nowadays like everything's just so freaking long but yeah. uh, it's just like a compact action flick yeah you know the story does what it needs to do you know it sets up the conflicts and you got you got some good leads some some fun uh supporting actors who come in and out yeah and i i think it's a fun movie you st- and you still feel the same way after all yeah, these yeah almost the exact same way when i rewatched it uh, i love the opening scene with the crystal method song bumping <laughs> this back in the day this was my just blast the sound system hey you guys want to hear my sound system okay <laughs> just blast the sound system i didn't even, even have surround sound yet we were ghetto back then it was just two big ass stereo speakers baby not even no subwoofer but i had to rock it you know what i'm saying so yeah when this when this this scene was so well done the cinematography in this movie is absolutely insane. It is insane. And I love how basically Chai Yun Fak's character walking in was the angel of death. He's literally the angel of death. Especially when you have that awesome above shot when he's walking through the club. And it's just him, just just following him. Everyone else is dancing, and he's just it's just fun. it's such a great shot. And 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 he's straight up gangster with it when he don't say shit. He just walks up to the table and pulls pulls out a bullet yeah. and puts it on the table in front of them and then just goes back to just looking like this. He didn't have to say anything. And then they see the inscription on the bullet and they're like, oh shit. And then that was it. That just the, the, the angel of death. And then a great opening shootout. Yeah. Guns a blazing. Doing little, doing little fancy spins and turns around. Especially with that. It was great. But what I really love about this movie is the wonderful beautiful satisfying luscious juicy bloody squibs <laughs> you probably thought i was going to say something else but mm-hmm. the bloody squibs in this every time i see one i'm like oh mwah, mwah. <laughs> thank you 90s thank you the other thing if i could add something yeah the special edition dvd had a director commentary on it that i listened to mm. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, and Fuqua said that he had some frustrations and he felt like because he was like a new director, they, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't really get to to do what he wanted. And in, in some cases, you know, and one of it was the, like the story and adding stuff like that. He also said that the first draft of the script had so much dialogue for Chow that he felt like it was almost too much. Oh, so wow. him and Chow went through the script together and kind of went for more of uh at least a little bit more of just like a uh a mannerism type of approach you know what i mean like okay. uh, expressing things through emotions and stuff like that that's okay. that's what i was thinking because mm-hmm. when the the monk dies yeah child, child doesn't really say a lot but you can see it in his facial expression mm-hmm. same with same with him targeting the kid like he yeah. pulls back because he understands that this is not cool yeah you know? Yeah. So, so I think that is makes a lot of sense. And director, I was reading up on it. The director said there was a lot of this. How should I put it? Um, because he was young, so it's like this Hollywood pushback. I don't know if it came from the actors themselves or just people on the set, but he said it was, as Erica pointed to, it was very hard for him to kind of get what he wanted, like full throttle. Right. <clears throat> I'm not surprised. It- and Kyle, on the extended cut, did they have the scene in the car where they talk about the cultural revolution? Yes, oh, they you did. can talk about that later. Yeah. 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 And the whole shootout at the apartment Dude. is really well done. Like the fact that you get to see Mira Sorvino hold her own in yeah. this scene. Like not just being like you you don't get like this rarity of like a female star like not stumbling around and not knowing how to use a gun, but she actually just holds her own commanding the scene with Chai and Fat too. Yeah. Both of them started blasting. They, <laughs> they started, started blasting. They started blasting. Uh but but yeah, it's like after watching this movie, mm-hmm. I was like, she really had something. Yeah. In terms of being like an action 
actor. But, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that was good. There's the queen, the queen. Aww. Oh, now I got to blow it up now. Hold on. <laughs> Our new addition. Yeah. Oh, with the, with the name. Well, we don't know yet. We've just been calling it oh. Pipsqueak. So. All right. He's Pipsqueak for now. Pipsqueak. Aww. That's right. Pipsqueak here is the unofficial, is the official mascot of today's stream. Right. There we go. <laughs> Name him Jurgen Prokno. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, hey, you. you, 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 you. <laughs> oh, that's. I, awesome. I think we should name it Meg Coburn. Oh, there, oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. Oh, adorable, adorable. I love my daddy. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna be distracted, going, oh, yeah, the you're right. It's distracted right now. <laughs> Five hours later. All right, so back to the movie. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this, my uh, Patrick Kilpatrick's death was hilarious. Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, we got our boy John here sliding around shooting motherfuckers, and then Patrick just hears the sliding. He can't see anything. Yeah. And he just looks down. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Great. My favorite though is when they're driving out of the car wash, and we have that one moment where uh, John sees uh rooker here this was mm. great directing yeah because they both recognize each other and then rooker's like hesitant he's like why is he why is he not shooting me right now <laughs> yeah you know great scene great scene let me let me go stan zito zedkoff that's his name yeah. that is his name <laughs> what kind of name is that stan zito zedkoff <laughs> but yeah a lot of uh especially with blade a lot of black leather with sunglasses mm -hmm. uh, we got going on predating the Matrix. Yep. Even in this movie, Giant Fast character says, I need guns. Yeah. That's right. One year before the Matrix. <laughs> Giant Fast said it first. That's it. <laughs> he did it first. He did it first. Yeah, there you go. Here's the scene. Yeah, God, those cops. Jesus yeah. Christ. That lady, though. Yeah, she's <laughs> poor lady. That, yeah, lady. Poor lady. that was the worst time to pull out. <laughs> oh, that didn't sound right. But yeah, we're going to keep on rocking <laughs> on here, which gives us a really great, uh, satisfying, visually orgasmic cinematography here. I mean, this this is just insane. This shootout, yeah. visually to look at. I mean, with the the halt, you know, the alleyway, the neon signs, the music, the slow motion, the body count, the squibs. So Mir Savino's crashing through with the truck, <laughs> screaming, trying to run over motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, oh man, there was some really good stuff. But what you know what's my favorite part? My my favorite part used to be giant fats character John jumping on top of the car and just just <laughs> point blank range. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Just kept going, right? He was so he was so like just that ah. the guy got out of the car and he's like pointing the guns at the guy. I mean, he's got no more bullets. He's just like ah. <laughs> is he still in that mode? <laughs> He's in that rage mode, man. But uh, now rewatch that. That's that used to be my favorite scene, like this scene right here, just completely mm -hmm. murking the, the dudes inside. Like, oh yep. my god, it was so good. It was so good. Um, but uh, and again, just beautiful visuals. I mean, look mm -hmm. at this shot. This is a still from the movie. I mean, look at this. You know, and that used to be my favorite part of the movie. But rewatching it <laughs> recently. My favorite part of the movie, it's random. It doesn't make sense. But while he's going down the alleyway, shooting at the car, trying to get close to it, Al Leong just pops up out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see Al Leong the whole movie. No. I'm pretty sure we did not see him the whole entire movie. And Al Leong, that's right, Thug Central. That's right, hire us. Thugs are us. Comes out of a random door. <laughs> <laughs> just start shooting, and then John does a little roll forward and does and, and, and takes care takes care of Al. But I was like, oh, okay, this is a boat. That's a little cherry on top of the movie now. Do you want to hear more? Click on one of the links above, or check the link in the description box to watch the full video and subscribe.